American fast food is taking over France. From recent arrivals, like Popeyes and Krispy Kreme. We appreciate more American fast food than Americans themselves. To established favorites. KFC, of course, because I love chicken. It's like the hype, it's the trend now. It's addictive, I think, and it brings very much of uh, happiness to people. Between 2019 and 2023, more than 1,300 fast food stores opened in France, bringing in 19 billion euros in profits in 2023 alone. Despite its reputation for gastronomy, the French palate is changing. France is McDonald's and Burger King's second largest market outside of the U.S. A lot of brands want to come in France because France is an El Dorado. You, you do two or three times sales more than the other country. It's a country that has a high propensity to eat, Amer eat at American brands. and has the right demographics as well that restaurants have found success there. So how did American fast food companies win over the culinary conscious, fine dining, Michelin star loving French crowd? CNBC visited Paris to find out. It's lunchtime in the Les Halles neighborhood in Paris. I take this menu today because uh, I love uh, fries and uh, I love nuggets. Between 2013 and 2023, fast food sales increased a whopping 61% in France. McDonald's and Burger King are the biggest players. Their combined sales climbed to a total of 8.3 billion euros in 2023. Burgers play a big role. Quick service restaurants that served burgers accounted for about half of the country's sales that year. The burger has taken a growing share of the market over the last 30 years and has become an essential item on every restaurant menu. But it's not only burgers. American fast food companies, helped by clever marketing, built their brands behind iconic products. People in France want to discover uh, other tastes. And when you explain that with a good story, with an iconic burger, you succeed. For Popeyes, it's a chicken sandwich. For McDonald's, it's a Big Mac. For Burger King, it's a Whopper. We are the country of the Michelin, uh, the Michelin restaurant. It's like gastronomy, very high standards. And still, QSR fast food is very trendy. What that shows is that even though we appreciate food, we still understand that we love treating ourselves. In a five-year span, the country's top performing fast food chains, excluding Subway, opened nearly 500 stores across France. Total profits for the category increased about 10% during that time. In the most recent decade, it's really heated up from other newer concepts, more fast casual that have gone over to France. I think American concepts have done a great job of making their offerings an affordable indulgence. The potential of France is huge, given the appetite for the customer for both for pizza and for American brands. So you think that you have a great combination. France is a global leader in culinary excellence and boasts more Michelin-starred restaurants than any other country. It's home to esteemed culinary institutions like the Cordon Bleu, producing some of the best chefs in the world. In 2022, the country claimed 157,000 eateries, more than half were traditional full-service restaurants. Because of this legacy, American quick-service restaurants, or QSRs, took a specialized approach when entering the French market. What I can tell you about French people is that we don't get fed, we eat. And actually, we treat food with emotion. So whenever you bring an American brand, you can't just bring an American brand. You need, you need to bring emotion with your product. You need to bring connection. Just given the cliche that France is a fancier place to eat, the concepts have really led with their best foot forward, really focused on modernized images, higher quality, higher price point, more innovative offerings as well. That includes sourcing most or all ingredients from French farmers, like the potatoes used for McDonald's French fries and the chicken in Popeye's sandwiches. It's very important to build this relationship. They have strong partnership with the farmers. That's why uh, the QSR American brand uh, have succeed. American QSRs have adapted to European Union food standards. And as a result, those products are healthier and less processed than the U.S. offerings. 
These brands also cater to French palates by altering menu items or creating new products. But if we speak specifically about pizzas, you know, what it takes is that you need to become French friendly when it comes to the product that you are offering. The one campaign that we've been running every year for the past six years, it is the raclette and people love it. Our most successful campaign every year was the raclette. And it's paid off. Many consumers now consider the chains to be just as much French as they are American. It feels like it's part of us now. It's American based, but we don't really see the difference. There's KFCs, uh, McDonald's everywhere. McDonald's has the strongest foothold in part because of its first mover advantage. McDonald's was the first quick service concept to go to France and found tremendous success there. And I think as a result of that, you've seen that a lot of folks have wanted to replicate that success. Burger King, on the other hand, re-entered after a 15-year hiatus in 2012. Now, it boasts the second highest number of American QSR franchises in the country. Pizza Hut arrived in 1987, KFC in 1991, Subway in 2001, and Domino's in 2006 but their rapid expansions happened mostly in the past decade. Popeyes and Krispy Kreme opened their first French stores in February 2023 and February 2024. It's a new brand in France and uh, it's very, very fantastic uh, for uh, the French uh, people. Shifts in French society like digitization have allowed the fast food industry to flourish. Take away, drive through, you can collect, delivery, all the QSR restaurant can do that. It's a perfect match for today's needs with the hybridization of concepts accelerating even further in the wake of COVID. We have a very small part, for instance, now of our customers coming at the counter to order. I mean, like it's less than 10% of our orders. 60% are online. One in five meals in France is eaten outside the home. Experts predict that number will increase. It's a young population, uh, high immigration population, as well as the fact that high GDP per capita country that leads to strong unit economics across the industry. America's pop culture influence is another powerful tool. For uh, young people, they grew up watching series or uh, movies uh, where in America, you know, they were eating fast foods. So I think now uh, when we saw fast food coming in France, all the young people were very, pretty excited about that. Bigger portions and modest presentations appeal to even the most delicate palate. High inflation and shortened lunch breaks have contributed to a need for convenience. The American food is tasty, uh, big. You know that you will uh, be... <laughs> Lunchtime today is around 42 minutes. This prevents people from going home and therefore encourage out of home consumption. The QSR American brands respond perfectly to this problem with the development of digital tools to improve consumers' quality of life. I really like good food, but you need a budget for that. So when I want to have really good French food, I, I take my time. It's uh, usually on the weekend during my working time. I prefer to go to, to fast food. But the restaurant industry is volatile and highly susceptible to domestic and global changes. In 2024, McDonald's and Starbucks executives said that boycotts related to the war in Gaza caused Q4 2023 sales to slump in countries with a high Muslim population. That includes France, which holds the largest Muslim population in Europe. After all, France accounts for 7% of the fast food chain's total revenue. McDonald's also blamed its overall weaker performance on pricing backlash, acknowledging a sales drop in the U.S., but not commenting on international markets. Something I, I don't like is the string inflation. They reduce the size of the burger and they uh, raise the price. Subway has closed more than 100 of its French storefronts since 2015. I think the more near-term risk is going to be more macro-oriented, that France seems to be uh, the first European market that's really succumbing to restaurant industry traffic and restaurant industry traffic softness. Staying competitive in the new digital age can be tricky, even with decades of experience. We come from a world where before 2016, the only people that were delivering were pizzas and sushis. I compete with pizzas on one hand, so I need to be the best in class 
in that universe, but I also need to be the best in class on the delivery business. Because again, in front of me, I do have QSR actors like McDonald and BK that are between seven and 12 times bigger than me. Not everyone has welcomed the expansions. A neighborhood collective in Paris's 20th arrondissement protested against a new Burger King in 2023 over, quote, outdated environmental practices. France implemented new laws that same year, targeting fast food companies over waste. Now, QSRs are required to offer reusable cutlery and cut down on single-use packaging. We have created dishes, especially for the QSR uh, uh, brand uh, restaurants, and uh, your, your sustainability seems better than the others. The QSR market in France has a lot more room to grow still. Chipotle, for example, has only six locations so far. Taco Bell has not entered at all. The burger, the beef, the chicken, and maybe uh, the tacos in the future. Steak and Shake now boasts 37 locations. Carl's Jr. is playing catch up after breaking ground on its first French location in 2023. Wendy's is supposedly planning a move too. The next push is going to be more of a focus on chicken, which we know in the United States to be higher margin as well as more younger consumer focused. One of the missions was always to make our product broadly available. That's in the next five years. Uh, we already have so like close to 500 stores. There, there is a big potential, but there are other ways to distribute our products. And that, that's where also like we're looking at alternatives. We have the pizza distributor. The industry is projected to be worth about 21.5 billion euros by 2028. And so far, the French palate seems ready for it. The taste is really different in front of uh, the other uh, restaurants. I think uh, they have a special touch and that changes everything. 